What do you do when you need to provide Kubernetes clusters for different development teams and applications? You have two main patterns to choose from. Option one, you build a new cluster for each developer, team, or project. It's great for isolation, but costly and slow to provision. Option two, you can allocate a single cluster resources to multiple projects and then associate each project with a namespace. It's more convenient, but certain resources cannot be scoped at the namespace level. There's no hard isolation in that particular case. Today, let me show you a third option, pallet virtual clusters. So what is a virtual cluster? In short, it's a lightweight partition running on a host Kubernetes cluster. It is similar to how virtualization creates logically isolated virtual machines on top of physical servers. You get the best of both worlds, the isolation of dedicated clusters for each project or tenant, while also optimizing resource utilization within a shared cluster. Pallet virtual cluster is based on an open source project called vClusters wrapped in Pallet's declarative management. And of course, it includes other enterprise features that make it more powerful and super easy to use. Let's get sense on. Before creating a virtual cluster, there are a few prerequisites. First, you'll need a host cluster, which we can deploy using a Pallet cluster profile. A cluster profile helps you manage the lifecycle of your Kubernetes cluster in a repeatable and declarative fashion. You can choose any cloud or on-premises. In our demo, we're going to use Google Cloud. We give it a name and select the appropriate cloud account. Then we select the profile we want to deploy. For the sake of conciseness, we're not going to show you all the options of the cluster creation, which will be the topic for another video. So let's move to the next step. Once the cluster is deployed, the second step is to create a cluster group. A cluster group is just a collection of Kubernetes clusters that are used to host virtual clusters. They can reside in different clouds, manage or unmanage, or even on-premises. You have to select at least one cluster and can configure additional ones at creation time or later on. One of the most important benefits of Pallet Virtual Cluster is that it helps you save costs by configuring other subscription. It just means that you can allocate more resources to your virtual clusters than actually available to your host cluster. You also have to choose how your applications will be accessed from the outside. You have both load balancer and ingress options, depending on the capabilities and granularity you need when exposing your applications. Finally, the last configuration part includes the limits you want to set to your virtual cluster in terms of CPU, memory, and storage, as well as more advanced configuration if you really know what you're doing. So far, so good. The job of the platform team is now done. Virtual clusters serve primarily as a standbox for developers using K3S as the Kubernetes distribution. So let's move to the app mode, aka Pallet Dev Engine, to create our first virtual cluster. For this, just select the cluster group you want to use and configure the resources you want to allocate from the host cluster. Optionally, you can give it a name or a random one will be generated by default. After a couple of minutes, you will be good to go and able to access your kubeconfig file to connect to your freshly deployed cluster. Pallet virtual clusters take advantage of other interesting features, such as the ability to pause the clusters in case resources are not utilized, and also inherits from Pallet standard capabilities, such as backup or airbag. Finally, to complete the workflow as a developer, our last step is to deploy an application. For this, we're going to use one of the default app profile available in Pallet Dev Engine. Similarly to a cluster profile, an app profile allows you to model your application in a declarative way. We will also cover that feature in details in another video. Since we already have created our virtual cluster, let's select that option. After a couple of minutes, we can see that our application has been deployed and ready to accept connection from the outside using the method we previously selected, a load balancer or an ingress. That concludes our demo for today. If you want to learn more, visit our website, check out our docs, or try it by yourself. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.